Hey guys, John V here from Phone Reno. Right now I have the HTC Evo 4G LTE for Sprint. I'm just going to run a few different benchmark tests here just to see the type of results we're going to get out of this final retail version that's going to be available to the public very shortly. So before we do that, I'm just going to show you how it performs out of the box and uh, just some normal operations. You can tell here just with the home screen itself, a lot of 3D effects in play here and you can also notice that it's uh, exhibiting a good amount of responsiveness. It's uh, pretty fluid with its movement. Other things, opening up the app pal, scrolling between the applications here, you could see it's tracking my finger relatively instantaneously and it exhibits still some of those great, you know, 3D effects, barely any hitch with that. So let's uh, punt, let's up the ante here. Let's uh, do something a little bit more processor intensive just to test it out, see how it fares with uh, other operations here. Actually, let's go to all and let's just change it to some sort of live wallpaper. So let's select this guy, and let's select the, uh, let's do this one here. See the lava flow. Lava flow seems to be a little bit, a little bit up there. So let's select that guy. And so you can see it's running in the background right now there, loading up the widgets. And here we go. And again, still really quick, instantaneous, opening up the app panel. And there we are. Still has a great amount of responsiveness. So definitely like it. Seems like a fast handset out of the box. So you're not going to have any issues with any slowdown or lag. So let's bring this back to a regular wallpaper here. And we'll run just the first test. And that's going to be a Quadrant. So let's wait for this guy here. Okay, so let's get started. Quadrant. Let's load that guy up. And here we go. We're going to run this guy. Now, we've already ran it several times, and it seems to be really good. Uh, definitely, in some cases, uh, it's over 5,000, a little bit over 5,000. Um, definitely, sometimes uh, it gets something down to 49, 4,900 range, but for the most part, really good scores, and we'll see that here as it uh, wraps up um, doing these operations right now. And we'll see the graphical components of this test here. See if we could zoom in here. You could see that it's doing that one there, 58 frames per second. This one here, 58 frames per second as well. So relatively smooth from what we could, what we notice here. And here we go with the next one. And this test is running approximately again 59 frames per second, which is something that you notice with a lot of high-end smartphones here. And the last one. 30 frames, 37 frames per second. So that one, they're a lot, a lot slower than the rest. But let's see what what result, what the uh, total number here is, and it's gonna give it this time a score of 4905. As we said, uh, you know, between 4900, a little bit under 5100, as we tested out several times. So it's still very respectable, beating out some other previous handsets out there. For example, you notice the Galaxy Nexus right there below it. Same thing as the Galaxy Tab, and to get in the Samsung Nexus below that. So let's let's show you the uh, results we've gotten with the Antutu benchmark test, just because it's uh, takes quite a long time for it to load up here. And total score is seven thousand fifteen. That's the total score uh, with the Antutu. If we put that in the score map here, and compare it to some of its some of its competitions rivals, and you could notice seven thousand fifteen. No, not quite as as uh, magnificent as the Asus Transformer Prime with its quad-core processor, but still a respectable number, beating out devices like the Galaxy Note, Galaxy S2, LG Optimus 2X, and so forth. So it's still a really nice score. And the last test here we're going to show you here is just Nina Mark II, a little bit more of a graphical component, a graphical test here. And we ran it several times, and on the average, it gives us uh, approximately 59.1 frames per second. So even with a lot of shading, a lot of you know uh, shadows, stuff like that, even smoke effects, it's still able to maintain a really great rate. So if you're going to be big into playing games with this guy, you're definitely going to have a, a wonderful smartphone that's not going to exhibit barely, it's not going to exhibit too much uh, lag slowdown. It's just ruin the experience. It's just going to maintain that lovely looking pace here. Let's see what it gives it this time. 59, point of 59 frames per second, so still a really good mark here. So that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, this handset's going to be launching very shortly, but if you'd like to learn more about the HTC Evo 4G LTE for Sprint, check out our website, phonearena.com. This is John V. Thanks for watching.